ability to see the performance each day allows us to work on what we need to improve on on a daily basis. Digital is evolving what we've got, building on it, adapting new technology as it's built and being able to realise the benefits sooner, earlier, faster and learn from that is critical to us staying ahead. Mais uma vez, boa tarde a todos. 
Mais uma vez, não se esqueçam, por favor, ponham os headsets, rodem aqui para me poderem ouvir. Vejam lá, conseguem-me ouvir bem agora? Tudo tranquilo ou não? Fixe? Boa, assim mesmo. Malta, estou a sentir que aqui está o almoço, está a fazer-vos aqui um bocadinho de sono. Aqui uma grande salva de palmas para ver se vocês acordam. Vamos lá. Mais, 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 bora. Muito bem, muito bem, muito bem. Bem, é o seguinte, temos mais um convidado nosso que vai apresentar um tema muito pertinente, uh, Blockchain Revolution on Technology. E, now switching up to English, please, our guest, José Perron, come to the stage. Big applause, guys. Good luck. Thank yeah. you. Good afternoon and thanks to join this session on Blockchain Technology Revolution. First to start, I would introduce uh, this topic uh, uh, as uh, that blockchain is not a buzzword, blockchain is not an hype, but blockchain is here and it promises to change the way to communicate and transact in a trustless environment. In the next few minutes, uh, I would introduce you the real application of blockchain and uh, the real use case that uh, as the why we have developed uh, in the next in the last month first to start uh, a couple of uh, data on uh, uh, blockchain uh, ecosystem the pointer is not uh, doesn't work only a minute only to, to check the pointer and we start uh, from the we change the pointer maybe okay thank you thank you so much uh, a couple of data on uh, blockchain uh, topic uh, the first data that uh, i would uh, highlight is the estimate of world economic forum that uh, said that uh, the 10 percent of global gdp by 2025 will be stored on blockchain technology. And another important data will uh, regard uh, the estimate of Gartner about 3,000 million of uh, euros uh, uh, that uh, will be the value of blockchain business uh, in the world uh, in the next years. When we say uh, uh, and when we talk of this technology, it's important to understand uh, what does it mean blockchain blockchain is a, a register in a form of uh, um, in a form of data and transaction that uh, uh, are uh, concatenates in a chain of block and uh, it's possible to um, order this transaction in a chronological way and uh, uh, secured it uh, by cryptography but also uh, we can use a blockchain in order to assure a trusted network between the different actors that want uh, to share transaction the uh, first uh, things that i want to uh, highlight is the parallelism between uh, blockchain and internet as uh, internet enable the exchange of uh, uh, information in a peer-to-peer -peer network as blockchain can enable the exchange of transaction in a secured uh, network. In fact, the single use of blockchain is the bilateral financial transaction. We know blockchain uh, with the uh, more important, uh, most important application of Bitcoin. Uh, so internet uh, enable the bilateral messaging uh, um, through the uh, IP of two server connected. The second aspect is the localization. With the blockchain, it's possible to realize a private network. Uh, and uh, with the uh, um, uh, internet, uh, we know the uh, private network as the internet. The third aspect is the uh, substitution. Uh, with the internet, we introduce a lot of services. Uh, with blockchain, we introduce uh, the disintermediation of the classical value chain, the disruption of the classical business model. And uh, uh, as internet is uh, the world wide web, uh, as blockchain uh, is the world wide ledger. An example of connected database in a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, that can enable the sharing of uh, the transaction. 
The numbers about blockchain ecosystem uh, uh, now are important. In fact, uh, we start in 2016 uh, uh, from a value of uh, 1.4 uh, uh, billion invested, uh, especially in startups uh, uh, that use blockchain as uh, uh, first technology. And uh, we expected in, uh, uh, we will expect in the next year the value uh, of uh, uh, 300 billion. But the interest uh, in this technology is, uh, we are look also in this picture, uh, the uh, research of uh, blockchain on the uh, traditional website as Google, for example. And from May 2017, it has become the most searched among the major technological uh, trends, for example, uh, respect uh, robotics, IoT, and machine learning. And also the annual investment are increased in uh, uh, the uh, last uh, years. But uh, now I would uh, to uh, let a quick look to how blockchain works. Uh, as I said, blockchain is uh, a register and the page of this uh, register are the blocks. The blocks is the elementary unit of the uh, blockchain and each block is connected to the previous block and uh, uh, the uh, form of this uh, connection is the chain of block. The first aspect is the distributed ledger. It is based uh, on uh, uh, the distribution of information among the different nodes connected into the network because uh, the best way to share information is to ensure the same information to each actor connected uh, into the network. And in this, uh, in this uh, um, technology, the most important aspect uh, regard the symmetrical uh, distribution of data uh, for each of these actors. The second aspect is the consensus. Each transaction uh, compo compose a block. The block is uh, a, a number of transaction and each block is connected to the previous one. But uh, if uh, we want to uh, exchange transaction on the blockchain ecosystem, uh, we should uh, uh, ensure the validation of this data, of this transaction. And the validation is a process uh, with a, m a mathematical method that uh, assure uh, the uh, possibility to uh, write a transaction, to exchange a transaction, to look a transaction on the blockchain. And the third aspect is uh, the cryptography. Uh, on the blockchain uh, network, uh, we don't see the traditional format uh, uh, of data, but we use uh, uh, public and pri private key to exchange data. In this case, the private key is the key to sign with uh, our uh, digital signature the transaction. And the public key is uh, uh, enabled to verify the transaction and to um, share this transaction into the network with the same address. Each people can look uh, the transaction with the public key, but uh, only with the private key I can sign uh, in a digital uh, uh, um, form the transaction. I would now to summarize uh, the important uh, aspects of uh, blockchain technology. The first is the technological component. The first is distributed ledger. The second is consensus that can enable the validation of data. And the third is cryptography. After that, uh, we have three different uh, architectural modalities uh, to deploy a blockchain system. The first is uh, the public blockchain. As we know, the public blockchain uh, uh, as, uh, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum. In the permissioned or in private blockchain, uh, we know the effect, uh, uh, effectively relation between the uh, actor and the node of uh, the chain. And uh, the permissioned blockchain, an example, uh, uh, are the consortium of bank, of organization that want to share the information with the trusted network. And in the private uh, uh, blockchain is only um, a different name, but we can realize uh, a private blockchain on the same organization. 
when uh, we say of a different organization that realize uh, a blockchain network, uh, uh, we say permissioned blockchain. When uh, it, it's uh, the same organization, for example, an holding that want to share the information, the transaction with the, uh, with the uh, companies in the different countries, uh, we, we say private uh, uh, blockchain. But uh, what are the principal uh, uh, application uh, and uh, what uh, uh, um, blockchain can enable? The first is the notarization. We use blockchain as a, a virtual notary in order to share with everybody the same information. An example of that is the uh, protection of intellectual property, for example. The second aspect is uh, that we use a digital ecosystem and to share information on this digital ecosystem, uh, we should uh, um, use a token. The token is the mm, unique value to exchange uh, transaction on the blockchain ecosystem. And an example of, uh, of that is uh, the loyalty program, for example, in a new version that can enable a real-time exchange of points between the actor, a real-time reconciliation of these points or the metering and trading energy, for example, uh, uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, marketplace. And the third aspect is the smart contract. Uh, the most important uh, uh, aspect uh, that blockchain introduced is uh, the decentralized application. The smart contract is a, mm, an informatical object that can enable the uh, dynamic ex execution of rules. And an example of that is the possibility to share information in a public and private procurement with the digitization of the rules and procedures, uh, for example, to enable uh, an inventory process or to enable a payment uh, or an invoicing. For us, uh, there are uh, uh, four main transition to uh, realize uh, um, the movement from an early stage adoption of blockchain to the mainstream technology. And uh, uh, these are uh, uh, the uh, movement from private blockchain to uh, the public blockchain, like to internet. The second is uh, the movement from notarization, the possibility to use blockchain like a virtual notary to the tokenization of data. Because the importance of this new technology is to create uh, a digital environment, the possibility to share information, also physical data, in a digital uh, ecosystem. The third aspect is the movement from cryptocurrency to fiat currencies, because our, ec our uh, economical system is based uh, on uh, fiat value and uh, traditional currencies as euro, dollar, yen, and so on. And the fourth aspect is the movement from segregation to integration. Uh, we uh, think that uh, uh, blockchain can enable the internet of value the possibility to exchange data in a secured uh, ecosystem thanks uh, to the possibility to prove the authenticity, the ownership, uh, and uh, the process thanks to the rules uh, enabled with the smart contract to automate uh, the uh, process on the supply chain, on the digital uh, uh, environment. Now I would uh, introduce uh, a, a quickly uh, vision of uh, our uh, blockchain global leader, Paul Brody, that uh, highlights the aspects uh, of uh, this uh, transaction. Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I'm EY Global Blockchain Leader and I'd like to thank you for participating in this workshop today. I'm sorry I'm not there to be, in, I'm not able to be there in person. One of the things I, I thought it would be interesting to do is to talk to you a little bit about where we see blockchain going over the next few years. In particular, we believe there's four big transitions that are coming uh, on the horizon for the world of blockchain as we know it today. Um, the first of those is a transition in the enterprise from notarization to tokenization. So today, what a lot of companies do when they put things on the blockchain is they notarize them. They, they use the blockchain as proof that something happened at a particular date and time. And, and that is somewhat useful, but it's not tremendously useful. Blockchains were made, they were built from the ground up to support the buying and selling of tokens. And so we, we believe that's where the real future of blockchain technology is. 
And a good example is the evolution of our own food traceability software. So early on, what we did was we timestamped, we notarized when product was made and how it was delivered. Today, what we do is we build a token that represents each digital asset, that represents a physical item like a bottle of wine, and we represent that token on a blockchain. Now, tokens are particularly useful because once you have a token, you can buy it, you can sell it, you can mortgage it, you can move it around, and blockchains are built to handle tokens in the same way that banks handle money, which is to say, if I want to move a token, whether it represents an asset or money, from one location to another, it can't just be created out of thin air. Tokens are subject to rules. They can't be copied uh, without, being, without special rules being applied. So the result is you have much more robust and tight control over things like inventory and inventory management. So we believe one big important shift will be the shift from notarization to tokenization. The second big shift that's coming is the shift from fiat, uh, cryptocurrency to fiat currency. So cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether are not going away, but the fact is most enterprises want to transact in the currencies in which they already do business, right? And that's, that's true for public and private sector. So if you are a European entity, you want to buy and sell in euros, not in cryptocurrency, which is a, a volatile and, and adds foreign currency to it. So we believe the next big wave of payments on the blockchain will be largely driven by the, the shift towards fiat currency tokens. And we believe, based on conversations that we are having with central banks and other government entities, that in the near future, uh, public sector organizations and central banks will provide the regulations which allow easily for companies, or for banks especially, to offer uh, fiat currency tokens on public blockchains. And speaking of public blockchains, that's really for us the third big shift that we see coming for most organizations. Now I want to come back to the public sector or specifically to defense in a minute because it's one of the few areas where I don't think we'll see a shift to public blockchains. But for most entities, public blockchains make a tremendous amount of sense uh, compared to private blockchains. Private blockchains today exist primarily because it's not possible to have transactional and contract privacy on a public blockchain. If you do transactions on say the Ethereum blockchain, all of that transactional data is publicly visible. Uh, on a private blockchain, there are special tools that allow you to manage that privacy. The good news is advanced encryption tools, specifically zero-knowledge proofs, are coming, and it's going to make it possible for uh, companies to do secure private transactions, confidential transactions, over the public blockchains. And when that is possible, which we think we'll see over the next year or two really maturing, uh, it will then be possible for all different kinds of companies and organizations, direct competitors of each other, to do business over the same uh, public blockchain infrastructure. And that means that when you build a new application that you want to use a blockchain for, you don't also have to build a separate blockchain to go with it. And that's really what has to be done today. If you want to build a blockchain application, you have to build the blockchain, and it's like building a whole network and onboarding all the partners. That's very cumbersome and expensive compared to just deploying an application in an existing blockchain infrastructure. It's a little bit like encryption on the internet. We can all use the exact same internet, but our data moving back and forth is encrypted, it's private and secure, and we don't worry about other people reading it because encryption is so well proven. Lastly, we think the shift is going to happen from, and we already see it happening, from a world where blockchains are kind of an unregulated wild west to one where blockchains are largely fully compliant with uh, regional and national and, and, and international regulations and laws. So the fact is that blockchains are programmable business environments. If there are rules, you can put them into tokens and contracts and wallets. And the result is that over the next couple of years, we're going to see an enormous shift from blockchain as a place where kind of anything goes to blockchain as a place where legal and regulatory enforcement is, is quite robust. And in fact, it's quite hard to break the rules because they are literally written into the code of the infrastructure. Now, what do these big four trends add up to the shift from notarization to tokenization, from crypto to fiat, from private box blockchains to public blockchains, and from unregulated structures to regulated infrastructure? The result is going to be a business environment where we believe any two companies can easily transact complex transactions, not just two companies, but three, four, five companies can do complex 
multi-party transactions with shared business logic over a single enterprise. And today, if you think about it, that is actually very, very hard to do. We sign contracts and we make purchase orders uh, and we get product, we receive invoices and payments, and that's just a very simple model, but all of those things happen in separate systems. And as a result, making a payment is not that expensive and issuing a purchase order is not that expensive, but where we spend a huge amount of money on is reconciling all of these pieces. Did the invoice match the things that we received? Did the things that we received match what we ordered? Did the, the invoice and the prices on the invoice match the prices in our purchase order? And did all of those match the, the agreement and the rules and the discounts that we agreed to in the original contract? We tend to spend a lot of money trying to figure those things out. And in the blockchain, we can do all of that immediately and automatically. Uh, and the result we think is that blockchains will ultimately do for networks of organizations or business ecosystems, what ERP did for the single enterprise, which is to say it will allow us to share the facts and to have common business processes. Now I would introduce you in the real application of the blockchain ecosystem. As is why we have developed uh, many projects uh, on uh, uh, based on this technology. The first is Tracky Solution, a traceability solution that's enabled by the blockchain. The second is the card folder, the digital card folder in order to collect the data about uh, one specific car. The third project is the creation of a unique identification code for the Europe to enable uh, um, welfare services. The fourth is the blockchain in the power utility sector. The fifth is open innovation program for the public administration. And the last is a blockchain for the tourism. But uh, uh, the first solution for the supply chain that we have created uh, in the uh, last month regard the blockchain traceability. In this case, we use blockchain to notarize and tokenize data among a complex supply chain. In the picture, uh, uh, you can see uh, on, the on the right uh, the uh, gross distributors operator supply chain on the chicken product. And in this case, we uh, can enable, uh, uh, we use the blockchain to collect data of uh, three orcheries, 36 farmers, and many, many actors connected on the same database in order to collect data of the different steps and to prove the authenticity, quality, and territoriality of the product that uh, you can uh, um, uh, buy on the, on the physical store. The, uh, in the uh, left, uh, you can see uh, the uh, Wine blockchain. The Wine blockchain is the first application of uh, blockchain on traceability project and also in this case uh, you can show uh, the entire uh, um, process from the harvesting to the bottling with the proof of authenticity because uh, we use a blockchain to ensure the immutability and modificability of the information that we have collected on the uh, blockchain and the consumer uh, uh, can uh, use a QR code on the package to scan that and to redirect directly on the landing page that can show the information about this supply chain with a certificate that guarantee the proof of notarization on the public blockchain of Ethereum. The name of the solution is EY of Chain for Food Traceability. And uh, now there are a lot of projects in Italy, but also uh, in Spain, and we hope also in Portugal, uh, we uh, have uh, uh, developed this solution also for the sake in Japan uh, to contrast the counter cheating uh, for uh, the wine uh, exportation. And uh, we are developing uh, now also a platform to create a big a huge uh, um, marketplace of e-commerce for the European wine for the Chinese market. Once upon a time, there was a bottle like any other. Today, EY introduces Wine Blockchain, and it's a whole new story. With Wine Blockchain, you can give consumers a full account of your wine's quality and its DNA through real, uneditable data 
data collected during the winemaking process. The system creates a register for the certification and secure transfer of data. A sort of database containing information on every stage of the winemaking process, from cultivation to bottling. A detailed, shared, transparent, direct source of information on the entire production process, visible to all the players involved. In order to verify the accuracy of the information stored and give consumers the true story behind every bottle, a story that people want to know. For these reasons, EY has applied blockchain technology to the world of winemaking, so as to support the values of Italian wine and self-certify and communicate its territoriality, authenticity, and quality. The QR code enables the consumers to consult a web page that tells the full story behind every bottle. That is, the entire production process, certified step by step, with clear and transparent information that cannot be edited by the company once it has been certified in blockchain. Something in the wine world has changed. The EY blockchain safeguards the origin of wine with clear benefits for everyone. This is a real application, not uh, a proof of concept, but uh, the first wine uh, uh, has already commercialized uh, on the market. Uh, the first example is uh, this uh, winery company, uh, La Vis, uh, a, a winery in the north of Italy, that commercialized a blockchain product uh, as uh, this uh, kind of wine, La Mura Nero Davola bio product, and the benefits to use this technology are important. The first effect uh, is the transparency, a decrease of 15% uh, time saving in quality and assurance checks. The effect uh, regard uh, uh, the differentiation plus 580% uh, uh, click on the company website. And another important benefit is the digitization of the relations between the different suppliers uh, on uh, this uh, supply chain. We add also a data analytics tool to profile the client. It's a clustering profile uh, to create a NIPER profile. Uh, we can discover the gender, the age, the interest of the client uh, with uh, uh, a um, compliance with uh, uh, GDPR law. Uh, and uh, uh, this way can enable the possibility to activate marketing campaign, marketing actions. The return of uh, investment is 40% uh, um, and the uh, um, time elapsed of the project is around four weeks. The second uh, uh, experience on uh, the gross distributors operator uh, Carpur in Italy uh, is uh, another important uh, uh, project uh, and uh, uh, after uh, the first commercialization of this product in the real store for the chicken and now for the lemon and citrus supply chain, but uh, we are starting with uh, uh, other uh, um, supply chain uh, uh, product. Uh, there uh, uh, was uh, an increase of revenue uh, for two for the quarter after the launch of blockchain, a an effect uh, re that regard the differentiation, high traffic increase on the corporate website, and the possibility to uh, view the information on the supply chain with a dashboard uh, that can uh, decrease the uh, and uh, uh, give the process of quality a a and uh, assurance more easy. The second experience uh, that I want to show is the car digital folder. Uh, we have realized this application uh, that uh, uh, will be launched on the market uh, uh, in the next month of February in Italy to realize a, a digital uh, uh, folder with uh, the security of the information among the different uh, participants on the network, for example, uh, producers, uh, for example, uh, uh, car wash, uh, car workshop uh, um, operators, uh, uh, insurance operators, and so on. And uh, it's a solution that can enable a trusted relationship to certify the effective quality uh, of, uh, the way of, the of the car in, in case of secondary market trends. 
Uh, another uh, um, solution is the blockchain for security, social uh, security, um, to enable the security social number and to create an ecosystem between the um, different uh, um, public administration with the possibility to enable uh, automatic service for the um, welfare, for example, the self-aid employees, the payment uh, of uh, uh, the pension for uh, one, worker, one worker, one employee that works in different uh, uh, countries. Uh, the last experience of blockchain on energy to enable the possibility to share uh, from the prosumer the surplus of energy with the consumers. And uh, uh, the two experiences that we have done with the public administration, the first to create a solution that, uh, that can leverage on the transparency and uh, automati uh, automation e, uh, and digitization uh, of uh, procurement process. And the second with the uh, air, um, aeronautics defense um, administration in order to create a solution that can enable the maintenance of activities on the Eurofighter. Uh, the last but not the least is the blockchain uh, uh, solution for the tourism, a solution that can uh, leverage on the creation of an ecosystem with uh, the possibility to create uh, a new uh, kind of uh, loyalty program uh, with uh, the possibility to realize an interoperability um, chain between the merchant, between the administrations, the public administration, with the visitors, uh, with the citizens, in order uh, to uh, reward the experience uh, directly on the app and to verify the uh, effective uh, uh, experience on, uh, of the visitors uh, on, the, on, the on, on, the, on the country. Uh, the last we is the like TV by ACTA, Neither that is a solution that but can, happens, with the use of uh, smart contracts, enable the uh, um, uh, smart uh, um, investment in the insurance delay? sector. Uh, only to, to, to finalize my, mm, my stage is uh, the view uh, that uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the blockchain engineering. The blockchain engineering in the 2013 uh, uh, should uh, uh, be uh, enabled to drive a watercraft uh, to discover, to find uh, the notes uh, in the ocean. And uh, uh, it's a complex uh, uh, technology, but there are uh, a lot of opportunities that uh, uh, we should to obtain thanks to the blockchain. Thank you so much. Por favor, peço-vos que deixem os headsets nas cadeiras e os pockets também, ok? Só vos peço essa pequena atenção. Obrigado. Today, right now, you have more power at your fingertips than entire...